in this video, I want to explore the big picture for finding the equation from a graph of a sine or a cosine. So in this, this video is not intended to go through the skill and drill, you know, all the little things you need to know to actually find the equation. I really want to go into things that I think are confusing to students, all right? So what happens is a lot of times you have this infinite wave, right? And it goes on forever and ever in both directions. And the truth is you can find as many equations as you want. It is endless because the wave is endless. So we're gonna look at that. The other thing I wanna address is why is it that I can use a sine or a cosine? Like I could see where that'd be confusing. Like if you got a, if one equation is cosine, why not doesn't it just stay cosine? Well, I'll show you why, okay? So you have this equation, this graph that goes on forever and ever and it can be modeled by a sine or cosine. And even then you have a ton of sine waves and cosine wa or cosine equations and sine equations that could model this. So let's go back to the unit circle, okay? And in the unit circle, if you recall, when you rotate out a certain angle, let's say in this case 30 degrees, you create a, so here's your reference angle but you create a reference right triangle by dropping the perpendicular to the x-axis. Now, what happens then, though, is really this is the triangle that you'll get. And relative to the 30 degree, right, this side here is opposite, and this side here, the square root 3 over 2, is adjacent. But what happens here? There's still a 60 degree angle, right? Since you have a right triangle, one angle is always 90 degrees, which means that the other two angles have to add up to 90 degrees. They must be complementary. So then what happens is you have, even though you have a reference angle 30 degrees, you really have a 60 degree here where the opposite to the 60 is here. So this is for the 60 degrees, right? And the adjacent is here. This is for, for the 60 degrees versus the other one. Right? They switch perspective. It really just looks, it's depending on perspective. This is for the 30 degree. This is for the 30 degree. Right? So what happens is you really still have all the information from the point of view of the 60 degree angle within the 30 degree triangle. So the only difference is some of the, you know, you'll have to look at exactly, and we're going to look at how these definitions are applied. Because what happens is the lengths of the sides of the triangle, they don't change. <laughs> so the information is really there. So what happens then, if you look at it kind of, let's really go through it. All right. For the sine of 30, right, opposite is a half, hypotenuse is one, so you get a half. But from the point of view of the 60 degree triangle, or a 60 degree angle, sorry, this half is the adjacent, right? And then over the hypotenuse would give you a half. So if you can pause the video and just verify this for yourself that all of these are actually true, okay? So if, the, if you can convince yourself of that, then the next thing to see is that basically what happens is you can see that that information, the ratio that comes out to be a half, can come from sine of 30 degrees or cosine of 60 degrees. So it really, you can use the sine or the cosine. <laughs> so one of my points, right, at the beginning of this here is that, wow, I have an infinite wave. Why can I use sine or cosine? Because it has the same information. <laughs> that's why. So that's a big deal. And um, if you have one angle, then you're going to work with a complement of the other. So hopefully you can, again, verify this for yourself. Pause the video. I have all the, you know, I had all the ratios up here with all the sides, so you can really, really work it if you want. But essentially then, if you recall, you had those co-function identities, right? That's where all this comes from. The co-function identities come from the fact that when you have a reference angle for one angle, you actually also have all the information for the complement of that angle, all right? So that's why you can use sine or cosine, right? That's why you can use sine or cosine for that wave. Now, how does this show up? in the graphs, if you just look at the basic graphs of sine and cosine. Well, if you look at cosine, check it out. 
yes, we know this is the cosine wave, right? So a regular cosine looks like this, right? So there it is, right here, regular cosine. But where's the sine wave? Well, right here. Right? And how far away is it? Wow, look at that, pi over 2. <laughs> so there's that. And then if you look at it, the sine wave, you can see the same thing. Right? So again, here's your basic sine wave. Your basic sine wave looks like this, right? Where here's your axis. By the way, I think I forgot to put the axis on this one for you. So the axis would have been here, right? All right. So here's your basic sine wave, and you can see it starting here, going up, come down, coming back up. Where's the cosine wave? Right here. There it is, right there. <laughs> so again, how far away is it? Oh, look at that, pi over 2. Right? All right. So hopefully that should substantiate that you can use a sine or a cosine wave when you're trying to describe an infinite wave like that that goes up and down. So now what do we do? So now we look at, okay, how do we start doing this? And this isn't, I, again, I'm not trying to really go through the nitpickies of how to find these equations. I've got a few other videos that go into that, but I want to go over broad tendencies. So in general, now this is just my recipe. You don't have to do this in this order, but this is the order I choose to do it. When I'm given a wave and I'm asked to find the equation of that wave, I usually f I find k first, the new axis, right? Then I go and find the phase shift. When I do find the phase shift, they have to tell me in the problem that I am to look in a very specific interval. I can't be a mind reader. They have to give me this or I can't do the problem or I have to choose myself, right? So then, fi then I find the period and I use that to find b because the period is 2 pi over b. Then once I find b, I replace it in this phase shift, negative c over b. I plug in b and I can find c because I have it over here. Right, I have the number that it's equal to. And then I find a. Right? So that's what I do. So let's take a look at some examples and see, again, what are similarities. All right, so here is the same wave. This is the wave that I showed you at the beginning of this, but I just zoomed in on it. So this is this wave right here but I zoomed in on this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep this the same, like you're gonna see the same picture, but four different equations, okay? So here's how they'll ask the question. They'll say, find equation of the form, and you have to pay attention. Is it cosine or sine? Because, let's take a look at this. Basically, your sine wave looks like this, right? And here's your axis. Your reflected sine looks like this, right? But again, it always starts at the axis. That's the key here, that for a sine wave, you are looking for where the graph crosses the axis right there. That's what you're looking for, okay? Or whether it's reflected or not. And then for cosine, your basic shape is here, right? And here's your axis. So again, and then ref let me go ahead and put in reflected cosine. So that's you start at a min and then go up, come back down. Here's your axis. So for a cosine, you're always, instead of looking for where the graph crosses the axis, you're looking for a max or a min. Obviously a max if it's a regular cosine and a min if it's reflected cosine, all right? So you gotta keep that in the back of your mind. And going back to this then when they ask, find an equation of the form a cosine quantity bx plus c quantity plus k, you've got to look for a cosine and they got to tell you where to look. So this is this information here. This is how I know where I'm allowed to look for the beginning of the wave. Now, why do I say that? Well, the wave is the wave. Uh, it's infinite. It goes on forever and ever. So you have to tell me, right? You have to tell me, well, where do you want me to put a handle on it? You know, where do you want me to, where's the beginning? Give me one little piece of it. So they have to tell you that. And so that's where they tell you this right here. They say that the phase shift, right, this is what this is, this negative C over B. Make sure I'm not, yeah. This negative C over B is the phase shift. 
it's in English, it's where the wave begins. Now, I know I'm saying where the wave begins, and I'm also saying that this is an infinite wave. When I say where the wave, wave begins, what I mean is I want to get one wave so that then once I've got that one wave, I can now use it as a little rubber stamp and just use it as the pattern forever and ever in both directions. That's what we do, okay? So it's where the wave begins, okay? So they tell me it's somewhere between 0 and 2 pi. So I look on the x-axis between 0 and 2 pi. And since it's a cosine wave, I'm looking for a max. So the max or, in, or min, right? But I don't, so this is the part of the wave I see in here. So I see a max, I don't see a min, it must be this. So the wave begins at pi over three, right? And then you go on and on from there on. I've got this all done. I'm not gonna go through it super slowly, right? Um, I know where I begin. Oh, by the way, the K, I sorry, I forgot about that part. The K is the, in the middle, right, of the max and the min. So here we go from three to seven. So five right here, that is your new axis, y equal five, right? So this is y equals two, three, four, five, six, seven, that kind of thing. So I find that, and basically I go ahead and average, right, the max and the min to get the uh, new axis. I found that the where I was allowed to look, I found the max and I found the phase shift to be pi over three, right? That's where it begins. That's the X value where it begins this way. Right? And then what I need to then see is find the period. So let me again go, give me that recipe again. So then I find the period. So I look at how much distance does it take to see one wave? So when I look at this, I'm like, okay, I see a wave from here to here, right? And you can read that off. This is a little bit easier. You can read from here to here and you say, oh, okay, well the distance is from 13 pi over three minus pi over three, right? Which is 12 pi over three or four pi. So the period of this is four pi, right? Now, even though they don't ask for it, if they ask for a sine wave, I can guarantee you that the, this reflected sine wave that I see right here from here to here is four pi. Because at this point, every sine or cosine wave is going to have the same period because it's the same wave. <laughs> Not going to change. All right. So when you're reading these, regardless of whether they asked you for a cosine or a sine wave, whatever you see that's easier to read on your graph, sine or cosine, use that to find your period. Okay. Doesn't matter what they ask initially. Okay. So I found that the period is 4b, and now I set that the period, which I know the formula for the period is 2 pi over b, equal to 4 pi, and I solve for b, I get a half, all right? Now I go back in, let's see, where's my little recipe? So now that I've got b, I replace that value in the phase shift formula that I found way up here in part two. So I have negative c over b is pi over three, right? And so I put in a half and then I solve for C and I get that C is negative pi over six. Now the cosine wave that we were looking at is not reflected, right? It starts at a max and then ends at a max. So that's a regular cosine. So now it's not reflected. And so A is positive. And if we look at the distance that from the axis to a max, that's from five to two, that distance, I'm sorry, from five to seven, the distance is two. Or you can look at it from five to three, the distance is two, okay? So, and then we know A is positive because, so the amplitude is the absolute value of A, so it's the absolute value of two, but we need to know if it's positive or negative, we know it's positive because it's regular, it's not reflected, okay? So you put all that together and you put in A, B, C, and K. That's it, you've got your first equation, all right? But again, I'm gonna give you the same graph, <laughs> same exact graph, but this time, um, so it's the same picture. In fact, just let me throw that up there just in case. Just, see, same picture, right? But in this case, I'm asking you to find the equation uh, that's a sine equation and it begins somewhere between negative two pi and zero. Right, so what I have to do is say, oh, okay, 
find on my x-axis, right, because the phase shift has to do with the horizontal, right? It's dealing with B and C, which is part of the input to the function. So it's horizontal, so you're like, okay, where am I from negative 2 pi to 0? I'm allowed to look in here, and I'm looking for a sine function. Since I know a sine function always starts at the axis, i got to look at where the graph crosses the axis. It's right here. Right, this is your new axis, y equal 5, right? It's the same graph as we used before, so you'd have this, right? Beep, 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 y equal 5. So there you go. And now you know you've got to read this. So I'm telling you that this has an x-coordinate of negative 2 pi over 3. Now I have to say this graph isn't so great. Like if, if I didn't tell you that, you'd have a really hard time finding it. But somehow they have to give you the information. They either give it to you or they give you a graph that's actually accurate enough for you to read it correctly, all right? So what we know then is we have max and min, seven is seven and three, so you add them, right? Divide by two, get the average, that's five. That's how you get your axis. Then I found my phase shift to be negative two pi over three, all right? So that's the second part. Then I, you find the period. Now remember, the period is the same for both of them. Right, the first equation we found in this one, but let's say this is all we had, and we knew we went from, let's see here, um, negative two pi over three, maybe even to here, 10 pi over three. That's one full sine wave. So what's the, dif what's the difference? Well, if I go from 10 pi over three minus a negative two pi over three, that gives me 12 pi over three or four pi. So the period is four pi again, woohoo, big surprise. And so we have B is a half, then I use that to plug it back that back into my phase shift, right? Negative C over B. So I put in the negative a half, solve for C, and I get pi over 3. Now, in this case, I've got so far K, I've got B, and I've got C. I've got to find A. I know that A, the absolute value of A is 2, but I've got to look to see is the sine wave where it's starting here, is it reflected or not? It's not. It's a regular sine wave. So I'm going to use A as positive 2. So when I fill all that in, I get y equals 2 sine half x plus pi over 3 plus 5, all right? Now we're going to do it again, same thing. So let me show you again that the second graph we just worked with, which, is very, which was the same as the first graph. See, same, same graph, all right? Let's take a look at <clears throat> finding again another equation. This time we're going to find a cosine equation, but it's going to be it's going to have to start somewhere between pi and 3 pi. So I find on the x-axis pi, 3 pi. And in this area or this region, I have to think, okay, they're asking me for a cosine wave. A cosine wave is, regardless um, whether it's reflected or, or not, I am looking for a max or a min. So I'm looking for a max or a min somewhere in this interval. There it is. I have a min. The min is 3, and it occurs at x equal 7 pi over 3, all right? So then I go through the same recipe, these steps, and I find the equation of the uh, graph, sorry. So I say, okay, again, max is 7, min is 3, uh, average them to get 5, that's my new axis, y equals 5. We read off that the new uh, phase shift is 7 pi over 3, okay? So then I need, now here, this is, I showed you a little bit of the old way versus the new way. Um, what I see since I'm looking for a cosine wave is it's starting at a min and rising to the max and then it would keep going and it would end here. I don't see a full wave, but I see half a wave, right? I see from the min to the max. So one thing I can do is say, well, I see half a wave in the distance between 13 pi over three and seven pi over three, right? 13 pi over 3 and 7 pi over 3. So that's a distance of 6 pi over 3. So if I see half a wave at 6 pi over 3, then multiply by 2, I have a full wave at 12 pi over 3 or 4 pi. There's my period again. But again, I don't have to do this. I can say, you know what? Is it easier to read something else on here? It doesn't really matter whether it's a sine or a cosine because it's the same wave, and that means every wave that I go to try to find is going to have the same period. So if this is easier, which it usually is, I could say, whoa, I, instead I can go from this here, this cosine wave, even though they're asking me this reflected cosine wave, I can use the regular cosine wave. What's the period of that? 
Well, it's the distance between 13 pi over 3 and, and pi over 3, right? Which is 12 pi over 3 or 4 pi. Again, you're going to get the same answer, of course, because it's math. And so then, you know, you find your B, then you plug in your B into the phase shift, right, that we found here, you plug it in there, then you solve for C, and then you've got to determine, is A positive 2 or negative 2? So we already know, of course, this is the same graph, right? This is my axis, Y equal 5, right? And so there's a distance of 2 from the axis to the max or the axis to a min. But because your sine wave is reflected, right? In this case, we have a reflected sine wave right there. It starts here at the, at the uh, axis, but then goes down and comes up. So that is a reflected sine wave. So A is going to be negative. So in our case, we're going to get negative 2 and then cosine and then fill in the half, the negative 7 pi over 6 that you found for C and the 5 for the axis, okay? And one last one, just so you really drive home all this. Again, I am dealing with the same graph, <laughs> except this is now the last one that I'm going to do. Same graph, see it? Same graph. So now we're being asked to find a sine wave. But again, you have to be told where I'm allowed to look for the beginning of the wave, and I'm allowed to look between pi and 3 pi. So here, pi and 3 pi on the x-axis. It's a sine wave, so i got to see where it crosses the x-axis, right? For a sine wave, you got to figure out where it crosses the x-axis. So you're like, okay, it's right there. And then you, you give it to you that's 4 pi over 3, right? So you're like, oh, okay. Let's start out then, uh, go through our little recipe. First I find K, then I find the phase shift, then I find B. So, K of course is the same, right? We found that our phase shift is 4 pi over 3, but it's hard to see a full wave, right? It's hard to find a full sine wave here, right? Because they want me to start right here and it would be reflected. It's just hard. So instead, I'm going to find the period of the cosine wave and use that because they're the same. So instead, I use the pi over 3 to 13 pi over 3 and I find the distance there. That distance is for one full cosine wave, which will be exactly the same period as one sine wave. It doesn't matter. Okay. So then you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to use instead the period of the cosine wave that I can e read much more easily. And tra-la-la, I got 4 pi is the period, and then b is a half. Plug it back in, then into the phase shift formula find C, and now I have to, the last part of it is to find out if A is positive or negative. Well, in this case, it looks like my sine wave is reflected, right? It's coming down from the axis, then going back up, so it's a negative. So in that case, I have A is negative 2, so I plug everything in, okay? So now, now that we've done that, and again, you can pause all this, do it yourself. I've got all the solutions right here. Just keep pausing. Here's what we found, right? For the same graph, right? We've been using the same graph right there. Right? We found so far four different equations just in this little area right here. <laughs> and remember, this thing goes on infinitely. <clears throat> so I found a regular sine wave, a regular cosine wave, a reflected sine wave, a reflected cosine wave, right? Starting here, the reflected cosine, starting here, the reflected sine, starting here, the regular cosine, starting here, the regular sine, right? So the point is then, yes, you can have an infinite number of sine and cosine waves to describe one wave, all right? So it's like saying I have a person, uh, her name is Sally Mary Smith. If I call her Sally, she'll respond. If I call her Mary, she'll respond. If I call her Sally Smith, she'll respond. If I call her Mary Smith, she'll respond. If I call her Ms. Smith, she'll respond. It's the same human being. It's just what handle am I using to get her to respond? So it's the same thing here. It's the same infinite wave, but where am I putting my handle? And my handle is where I start the wave. I start one wave for the full pattern of everything else. So what do we see then that is the same and different when we're doing these? Well, one thing I can see is that 
it's the same what? The five, if you look at each one of these equations, the five stays the same, right? It's right there. What else stays the same? The half. Why? Because remember, the period is the same for all of them, and the period is 2 pi over b. So the b has to stay the same for all of them. So the period is the same for all of them. Now, the a is similar, right? They're all either 2 or negative 2. So the only way they change a little bit is if you have either reflected or not. So the a can change sign. So b is the same, right? We found that K is the same. We found that A is the same, but can be positive or negative, depending, depending on what's reflected or not. So A ends up being the same number, but it's either positive or negative. What really changes among all of these equations is C. C really changes. Okay. That's really what's different, and that's why they have to tell you, oh, look for it here, or look for it over here, because it's the C that's going to change radically. But really, other than that, they're all kind of the same. <laughs> I mean, it's not, you know, the process is the same. This isn't really, once you see these connections, hopefully that makes it a lot easier. Um, what I'd like to do is go ahead and show you this graph if you want you could take a picture of it you could pause the video you could take a picture of it and then if you'd like you could um, go back through the four examples right i did a sine a cosine a reflected sine and a reflected cosine you could do all those and just practice right go back and look at the graph and what points you were given and then just go on from there and then you could use the little recipe if you'd like here for more practice but you know this is all the big connections for finding these equations, sine or cosine, for an infinite wave. All right? Thanks so much for listening.